Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome to episode 28 of Action RPG Game in Unity. Today episode will be dedicated to fixing some issues I have amassed over the course of this tutorial. Control of clicking is applying a click when you press a button and when button is being released. So it creates this effect of double clicking. Open the player character input. We will be executing input only when we press a button, otherwise we will do nothing. So if input callback context is performed, meaning the button is being held, or cancelled, meaning button is being released, we will return out of the execution. Good, it works now. Now let's fix the issue with ability presses. If I press 1 executing first ability, it will follow similar issue as with main input on the mouse. And if I press any other button, which correspond to empty slot for an ability, it will cause an error. To be able to identify the context of button press, we need to pass the callback context as a parameter, and our activate ability accept integer, which we use to activate the ability under a certain number. So let's implement this simply. Let's create specialized methods for ability calls, like ability1, ability2, etc, etc, and pass a callback context as a parameter in those methods. And use this context to determine if the uh, button press is started, meaning you just press the button. If true, call activate ability, pass the ID of the ability. Now let's copy the code for abilities between 1 and 6. Be careful with copying code, double check that you pass correct ID after each copy. Now call this methods from the input. I would like to address something. This episode is based on the feedback I received in the comments. Don't worry to drop the suggestions or any kind of errors or things I missed. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And together we can improve it. Don't worry, I'm open to criticism and I will be addressing the issues like I'm doing in this episode. And together we can make this tutorial better. Thank you in advance. Good. Now let's fix the no reference. If we are trying to use an ability outside the list of available ability for our character. We have one ability on the panel. And if you press 2 or 3 or anything else, it will cause an error. Inside the activate ability, make a check if the ability ID is outside the boundaries of the list. Or the selected ability is null. If any of those conditions are true, 
let's return out of the execution. Let's test this. Good. Now we have an issue with inventory. You can equip an item. You can replace an item. But you can't simply unequip an item. So, inside equipment slot, let's follow the calls of the function. We will be looking where our input to place and equip an item is being called from. Until the place where we will determine that player is holding an item which he is trying to equip into the slot. It's in the inventory controller. It will be inside item slot input method. If the player interact with the slot while not holding any item, meaning there is no intent to equip some kind of item, we want to try to pick up an item from that slot. Create new method called pick up item from slot. Inside, call and create a new method called pick up item from selected slot. We already implemented the code for removing the item from the slot when you swapping the items in the slot. This code unequips the item from the slot and return it. So let's reuse it. This code were used when you swap an item. So one item is being replaced with other item. But now we want to introduce a way to clear a slot after the item being picked up from that slot. Create a new method called clear slot. Call inside the if statement. So if there is no item to be released, we don't call it. Inside this method, clear the reference to the item placed in the slot. And we will release the item icon from the item slot. Good. Now back to the pickup item from slot. And if we successfully picked up the item, item variable will not be null. So call select item. This method selects the item and makes the player be able to, you know, drag it around in the inventory. Now inside process left mouse button press, we want to execute the interaction with UI only if the button is pressed not hold and not when released. So instead of using boolean like in the character input, let's try to use input action phase. If the phase is not started, we will return out of execution. The input action phase can have one of the five states. We are interested only in three states. The started one, performed and cancelled. Started is when you press the button. Performed is when the button is being hold and cancelled is when the button is released. Let's test this. Good. 
There is a small issue with rendering icons of items on top of the slot button. We will look into this later in the development, don't worry. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people you can see right now on your screen, or access to project files on Patreon. So next issue, our move between scenes stopped working for some reason. Let's figure this out. The reason why it's not switching to a new area is simply because there is no call to change the scene, we removed it when we changed how our interactable objects works. And our interactable objects right now works that we create some kind of module, which subscribes to the interactable object. And when we interact with the object, this module is being called. So create another new component called scene transition interactable object. Inside we will create a new method called transition. Which have to accept inventory as a parameter. We don't need it for the transition between scenes. This will be addressed in next episode of fixing issues, don't worry. We need to be able to set the target scene name, so create serialized field for the name of the scene we are transitioning towards. And now in the start, subscribe the transition method to the event on the interactable object. And let's test this. Set the target scene and let's do it. Make sure your essential scene is an active one. Its name must be highlighted in bold. And if it is not, set it to be active by clicking right mouse button on the scene and selecting set active. Move the destructible boxes into the test area scene, so they will not be transitioning with our character between scenes. Good. There are still some things we need to fix, we will address them in the next episode. Thank you for watching the episode dedicated for fixing issues. Good, this is it for this episode, with best regards, see you in the next episode.